I hope you're enjoying Bali, Darren. I am very jealous, although, of course, you are there for work and not pleasure. What's Rishi Sunak said? He's tried to keep it local. He's tried to keep it quite domestic, hasn't he, in his focus to show that he's not just swanning off to Bali. Yeah, and not least of all, I'd say, Patrick, to a large degree, because actually us journalists on the plane on the way over, yes, there are big questions, of course, about... Russia and Ukraine. There are big questions about China and the United States. There are big questions about energy security and indeed food security. But you're right, there is an awful lot of domestic questions as well. We put those questions to the Prime Minister as we travelled on our 17-hour flight, frankly, to the other side of the world. And one of them was on the issue of migration. Now, interestingly, uh, the Prime Minister is pretty pleased that he has managed to sign this deal pretty quickly with France. Yes, it's a lot more money, but Frankly, the Home Office and the government feel that it could at least help. Their argument is that the already deal that's been in place with France has helped to a degree. It stopped uh, tens of thousands of crossings already this year, and they hope that that will increase substantially, particularly when you get kind of British police officers over on the French coast as well. But, but... You know what? When he's really pressed on, when the Prime Minister, you know, are you going to get these numbers down, Rishi Sunak? He says he's confident of it, but he's got no idea when that will happen. Or indeed, when we talk about the numbers falling, how substantially they may well uh, fall. And as he admitted himself, this is not in itself a silver bullet. There are a whole range of other uh, challenges uh, facing the government when it comes to the small boats crisis in the English Channel. Not least of all, frankly, as Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, was alluding to, uh, there is a massive backlog with processing cases. That means years of uh, delay. And also, we know that things like the Rwanda plan are still to take off. So there are real, real difficulties with this. And that's why you don't get to the specifics of how much this will help this deal. And the Prime Minister, while saying he's confident it will bring those numbers down, and he's trying to get a grip with this, and this is what he's spending all his attention on, in the end, he cannot say definitively that this will completely change the game when it comes to that small boat crisis. Yeah, indeed. I mean, the other big one, of course, is the UK economy. We're expecting this autumn statement. So if you believe what you read, apparently George Osborne has been invited back to give a bit of advice to Jeremy Holm, which I'm sure we can all agree is a, a lovely, wonderful thing that this nation needs. We are looking at potentially tax hikes and public spending cuts. The polar opposite, pretty much, of what Quasi Kwarteng and Liz Truss were talking about. Could be a tough sell for people at the moment, Darren. Yeah, I think it is. And, you know, Jeremy Hunt's talked in the past about these kind of eye-watering decisions. Again, Rishi Sunak on the way over here, not shying away from the fact that there are going to be some very, very difficult announcements to be made on Thursday during that autumn statement, trying to prepare the ground here somewhat. And really interestingly, he did bat against this idea. And it's interesting you brought up George Osborne there, actually, Patrick. This idea of returning to austerity 2.0, that actually, if you cut... Uh, public spending too much and you raise taxes too quickly, you could actually make things worse. You could prolong this recession uh, that was seemingly about to enter into. And there's lots in the right wing of the Conservative Party who say, hold on a second. OK, we know you need to re, re kind of engineer and restore the public finances, but is this really the right way to go about it? Rishi Sunak's response to that is he says that Liz Truss have frank effectively caused so much damage to Britain's international representation uh, in the markets that this is the only way to try and restore that confidence, if you like. But what it does mean is, yes, more pain, it seems, for all of us over the years to come. Now, some of that is because of the global economic headwinds that they're talking about here at the G20, about the energy crisis, about the fact that there is a slowdown globally following the pandemic and that war in Ukraine, of course. But some of it is undoubtedly self-inflicted with Liz Truss and quasi at mini budget. And it probably means that it will be more severe at home than almost anywhere else. But all I would say is politics is also, Patrick, about an expectations game. And while they're laying the ground for very, very difficult decisions, there must be one or two rabbits that they may well pull out of the hat on Thursday to try and ease at least some of that pain, maybe to distract us from some of those difficult decisions.